Um, next we have Deb Kelderman, and she is running for Lexington County School Board District 1 also. Yay. I'm Deb Kelderman, and I'm running for Lexington 1 School Board. I've been a Sunday school teacher for 30 years, so I know how kids work. I am a parent, a grandparent of five. I have a bachelor's in literature and a master's in education. What the school board has been doing here is slushing funds. They have $394 million in debt, but they have a slush fund of 212, which could cut the debt significantly. Our biggest problem is not that. There is a bill in the house that would make the school board give up 65% to teach our kids and give them a better education. We need to push that bill through. Mm -hmm. There's a bill in the House, sitting in committee, that is for career and technology for the kids who really don't want to be in school. Upstate has actually implemented it in about six different high schools, and it's working for them. We need to get our truants off the street back in school. If we can't do that, school choice is the only way to get them back in school. I was a product of school choice before I knew it was something exciting. My mother didn't feel that the public school was the best education. So a single parent whose husband passed away, she put three children through private school. Now when I was raising my two girls by myself, because Hubby and I had a bit of a disagreement for a while. My oldest didn't want to go to private school and she fought it. She's a product of public school. My youngest went to private school. She got the AP classes when she went to public school in high school. The education is different when you teach your kids, when you put them in a private school, when it's honed for them, or whether you put them in a public school. Without parental control and them, the parents being behind the teachers, your children don't learn because they don't care. It seems to me that when the school board decided to put iPads in the school, they are there already. Unfortunately, the kids who have the iPads are flunking. It's not a boon to their education. It cuts their education. The teenage grandchildren that I have, they have internet high school and grade school. They know that that piece of equipment is for their education. It's for reading the books that they need and getting correspondence from their teachers. The kids in the public school don't know that. It's a toy. It's a very expensive toy that the school's going to replace in two years. Yeah. Every two years, they're going to get a new one whether they break it or not. Yes. I shouldn't interrupt a minute, but do they have, do, I'm retired from Richland 1, mm -hmm. not Richland 1, but do they have some kind of sensor on there to keep them from going on all these no. play, play things? Or are they, no, they, the iPad is open to the internet. The parents pay for maintenance only. Um, so they can go on it, anything on the internet and they, then all these play. They're sending emails to each other and the other bad part about it, the teacher has an iPad for her teacher's curriculum She's not watching the kids. She doesn't care what the kids do in the class. That's why they're flunking. Yes. There was originally supposed to be some blockage on there, at yeah. least what I was told by a school board member from keeping them we being had able it to get on there. Yeah. However, all the kids have to do is go on the internet when they're not on their iPad at home and say, how do I bypass this security? Yeah. And so they found out. So yeah, quite a few of them have figured out how to get on the internet now. It's, it's not that difficult. Yeah. It, it's like a two-second fix to the iPad. Yeah, I've got one. My husband was very sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, game. But if the students do jailbreak their iPad and they are caught by the school, the iPad is, is taken back. It is then put back into the safe mode, and the child does receive disciplinary notice inside the school. So they are monitoring it to some degree. But, but they can't kids. monitor it continuously. There are too many kids with them. Um, I have seen a couple of classrooms where the youngest kids have the iPads, and you might as well have a babysitter. You could have a parent teacher in there to guide them through their lessons instead of a teacher who actually needs to give them the curriculum. I have an issue with that. 
We also have a problem this summer. Um, it's not bad enough that the school system is taking our taxes and willowing it away. They're going to charge every student that takes a summer school class $325 per class. Now that goes against what we're paying taxes for. And the kids that go to summer school are either trying to get ahead so they can get out of the high school because they don't like high school and they can do it really fast if they do it through summer, or we have our slow students or the students that need help through the summer. 90% of those parents can't afford $325 in this economy. So exactly how can we justify this? Um, as for school choice, the parents are going to get, if they teach them, if they allow their kids to go to another school, they'll be bused there on our wonderful bus system, and they'll get a $1,000 credit. Anybody who homeschools will get a $2,000 credit. But if you go to a private Christian school or a pro parochial school, you'll get $4,000. Now, why isn't that even? It should be the same for anybody who has school choice. It should not be different for any of them. Um, sat in the last school board meeting and was very put out by them. There are not the number of e-books that the iPads need for the students. They're all hardbacks. There's only a few. So why are we paying for expensive things? Yes? Let me ask you, it, it's maybe a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. But, uh, <laughs> well, where, where, where are you on online high schools? And what are they doing about online high school? My grandkids are in the internet school, K-12. Uh, the first one is graduating high school this fall. I have a 14-year-old grandson who is a junior in high school. So the K-12 system and the internet schools are great. My daughter goes to Provost Academy online. Mm -hmm. So she's doing very well. She's just going to National Honor Society and doing very well. That's fantastic. I believe that the internet schools allow the children to grow at their own rate. There's no one to say, oh, wait a minute, you're going too fast. Right. You know, we have to dummy you down. It allows them to expand their mind as fast as they can, and I think it's wonderful. And yeah, they don't get beaten up. No, they don't. They don't get bullied. <laughs> you're right. Anybody else have a question? Yes, Stephen. Um, Dev, what, what would you do? You heard this at, at last month's school board meeting because you were there. They were discussing, uh, and I don't know the bill number, but there's a bill, I believe, in the state senate um, that is going to require each school district to purchase the school buses back from the state and then provide for the maintenance and operation of those buses. Um, how would you handle that if you're elected? What's the best way for District 1 to deal with that? District 1 should privatize the buses because there are too many buses that need repair. With a caveat. All the bus drivers that we have that our kids trust need to be grandfathered into the new company. No questions asked. They've <coughs> done their job for us for all these years. We do not need to lose them now. The kids trust them. Does that answer your question, Stephen? It does. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? It's my first speech, so <laughs> thank you for listening. <laughs>